Hello students, in this video we'll see an example of finding the fernet sur frame of a curve. Given the curve r of t, which is 2t comma 1 minus cosine 2t comma 1 plus sine of 2t for t between 0 T to negative infinity and infinity, let's find T hat, P hat, and B hat, the Fernet Serre frame. To do this, we need to put the curve into arc length parameter. So let's find the velocity of the curve, R prime of T, is going to be a 2. And then the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so it's going to be a positive 2 sine 2t. Two and then the derivative of sine is cosine, that'll be a positive 2 cosine of 2t. Two so if we compute the length of this vector, or the speed of the curve, the speed of the curve, r prime of t, is going to be the square root of 4 plus 4 sine squared 2t plus 4 cosine squared of 2t. The cosine and sine terms add up to a total of 4, so this is going to be 4 plus 4. So this is going to be the square root of 8. So this is going to be a 2 root 2. So our arc length parameter, s, is going to be the integral from 0 to t of 2 root 2, our speed, du. So our speed, our arc length parameter, s, is going to be 2 root 2 times t, or equivalently, that t is going to be equal to s over 2 root 2. So t is s over 2 root 2. So we're going to update our curve now and put into arc length parameter. Our curve in arc length parameter is going to be what? Well, we have a 2 times s over 2 root 2, so that's going to be an s over square root 2. And then we have a 1 minus cosine of t times 2, which is going to be another s over root 2. And finally, a 1 plus sine of s over square root 2. So that's our curve and arc length parameter. So the derivative of the curve and arc length parameter is unit tangent vector. So t hat of s is going to be the derivative of this curve, so it's going to be 1 over root 2. And then the derivative of negative cosine is again positive sine, so I'm going to have a 1 over square root of 2 sine of s over root 2. And then a 1 over root 2 cosine of s over root 2. So we found our unit tangent vector. So here's our unit tangent vector. The derivative of the unit tangent vector is the curvature vector. So let's find that next. So the curvature vector is the derivative of the unit tangent vector. And that would be what? The derivative of 1 over root 2 is nothing. That's going to be 0. The derivative of sine is cosine, so I'll have a 1 half, because root 2 times root 2 is 1 half. And then I'm going to have a cosine of s over the square root of 2. And then a negative 1 over 2, the sine of s over the square root of 2. That's my curvature vector. The length of the curvature vector is the curvature. We can see that this is a circle, and the radius of the circle is 1 half. So the curvature is going to be the length of this over here. So the curvature, the scalar curvature, is the length of this vector. And this will be what? 1 half squared plus 1 half squared cosine squared sine squared. It'll be a total of 1 half. So our curvature is constant, so constant curvature. Good. Now, to find, to find the principal normal vector, we divide the curvature vector by the curvature. So what we'll see over here is we'll see that p hat of s will be 0, cosine of s over square root 2, and then negative sine of s over square root 2. To find the principal binormal vector, we have to cross t and p. So the binormal vector. will be the determinant of i hat, j hat, k hat. Then t goes in first, so I have a 1 over root 2. Then a 1 over root 2 sine, which I'm going to abbreviate 1 over root 2. I'm just going to write s for sine. 
And then I'm going to have a 1 over root 2 cosine, which I'm going to abbreviate as capital cosine, so capital C. And then over here, we're going to have a 0. Then we'll have a 1 half. And then that's the same exact cosine term, so C. And then a negative 1 half S. And we're going to bear in mind that S squared plus C squared is equal to 1, just like sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. It's just a way for me to make this a little bit shorter. So what's the I component going to be? It's going to be negative 1 over, so I'm going to have a 1 over root 2. And then this is going to be P, so we're going to have to, since this is P, we eliminate the 1 half. That was the curvature vector, so we get rid of that factor over there. So it makes it even easier, right? So there should be no, in this expression over here, we're putting in P hat, not the curvature vector. So this is what? This is exactly T hat cross P hat. So there should be no 1, one half on uh, 1 over, there's 1 over 2 as well over here. So just make some edits there. There we go. Now let's do this. So I'm going to have a 1 over root 2 sine squared, 1 over root 2 cosine squared, and one of these is negative, so this one's negative, of course. I missed my negative. So this is going to be negative sine squared, negative cosine squared. So the i entry of this is going to be a negative root 2. So we're going to have a negative 1 over square root 2 over here. Then let's look at the j entry. The j entry is going to be 1 over root 2 times negative sine, and then nothing. But the j is always negative, so I'm going to have a 1 over root 2 times the sine of s over the square root of 2. That's what capital S represents. And finally, if we do the k entry, we're going to have a 1 over root 2 times the cosine entry. So I'll have a 1 over square root of 2 times the cosine entry, cosine of s over 2. And this vector over here is our b hat vector. And that is the binormal, unit binormal vector. Now, if we wanted to find the torsion, what we'd have to do is we have to do the derivative of the binormal vector b dot p hat. So to complete the calculation, to find the torsion, what we need to do, we have all the components, we need to do negative p hat dot db ds. This formula over here, we have all the components of this. We have to do the derivative of this and dot it with p and take the negative sign, and then we'd be able to find the, the torsion of the curve. So this constructs the whole Fresnes array frame. We have the unit tangent vector t hat. We have p hat, the unit, this is the unit principal normal vector. And we have the unit binormal vector. That is the Fresnes array frame of this curve. T, P, and B act as I, J, and K do, except T, P, and B just move around the curve and maintaining their orientation as they move around the curve. Thank you very much.